How to remove tile. Removing tile is really quite simple. All you really need is a hammer and some sort of chisel or a second hammer with a hatchet on the back like I have here. And my goodness, the sound of that tile popping up is oddly satisfying. In the next few minutes, I'm gonna show you how to remove tile without causing a huge mess or damaging the subfloor under the tile. It's a simple process, but there is a trick to removing tile that'll make your life much easier. I'm also going to show you two big problems I ran into removing tile from my kitchen and how I overcame these problems. And make sure you stay till the end of the video because I'm going to show you how to remove the leftover mortar that's still stuck to the floor so you can have a flat surface to put down your new flooring. You're going to save yourself hundreds of dollars by learning how to remove tile in the next few minutes. It's a lot of work, but the crisp sound and feel of the tile breaking free and sliding out is oddly satisfying. <laughs> Just a little bit of work here. Looks like they're coming up though. So let's get right into it. All you really need is a hammer and some sort of chisel or a second hammer with a hatchet on the back of it like I'm using here. But I'd highly recommend you take at least two safety precautions, which I'll tell you about in just a moment. So when you first think of how to remove tile, you might imagine getting out a hammer and smashing the tile from the top and watching them crumble to pieces. But doing this is gonna cause a huge mess and it's much less efficient. The best way to remove tile is to use a hammer and a chisel setup and get underneath it and basically pry it up. You just need to find a spot along the edge of the tile you can get your chisel under cleanly without the tile edges snapping off and disintegrating. It might take a few tries, but if you can break off the grout around the edge of the tile first, you should be able to start hammering your chisel under the tile until it basically pops up and breaks away from the floor it was adhered to. If the edge of the tile snaps, just try and start over from a different side or a different angle and see if you can get the whole thing to pop up in one piece. I forgot to mention the reason I was breaking up all of this tile in the first place was because we were putting in brand new engineered wood flooring across the entire first level of our condo as part of our kitchen remodel. And if you want to see more of our renovation process and the complete cost breakdown for our kitchen remodel project, I'll put a link to that video in the description box below this video so you can watch it later if you'd like to. So let me take a moment to skip back to safety and then I'll show you some of the problems I ran into removing tile. Removing tile is really loud. So I'd highly recommend you wear earplugs for your own comfort as much as protecting your hearing. Also, wear some eye protection. Tiny pieces of sharp tile and grout will be exploding off in all directions. While I was removing tile in my kitchen, I started out with no eye protection at all. And then after getting hit in the face with tiny pieces of tile and grout repeatedly, I decided I better put on some sunglasses. But eventually, on one of my trips to the hardware store, I got a cheap pair of clear eye protection glasses so I could see better through the clear lenses. I also got me a proper set of safety glasses here, which are great because I can see better. You can find everything you need at the local hardware store, but if you want to order it online, I put a link below this video in the description box to all the stuff I use to remove tile. So to remove all of your tile, you basically just repeat this process over and over until it's all gone. But let me show you some of the trouble areas I ran into removing tile. Probably about 70% done. Gotta uh, get in that closet, under the fridge, and under the oven. The first major problem that happened for me was the concrete board under the tile crumbled and broke apart. I've been breaking up these tiles, and there's some sheetrock under it. There's uh, basically like a plywood and then sheetrock, and then tile on top of that. Over here, when I'm pulling up some of the tiles, it broke the sheetrock. Over here, it seems like maybe it just wasn't stuck down quite as well, but it hasn't really tore up the sheetrock too bad. We'll see if we have to replace the sheetrock or not. This is a pain in the butt. Probably a major reason why this happened was because we removed the wall and there was a huge gap in the concrete board, which made it weak near the edge. If you want to see how we repair this giant hole in the concrete board after you finish watching this video, check the description box and look for a link to that video. The second major issue I encountered when I removed my tile was pulling up the tile by the edge of the wall that was under the trim. Some of these tiles were really wedged under the trim and glued really well. The only way I found to remove these tiles was to use a knife and cut the glue off of the trim and the tile and then use a screwdriver to pry the tile from under the trim. Some of the tile in the small pantry closet was the most difficult to remove from under the trim because of the tight and small space and also because there was so many tiles under the trim in the pantry closet. 
Okay, so finally all of the tile has been removed, but there's still mortar on the floor. After you remove the tile, you're gonna need to get the floor pretty flat if you're putting down new flooring. This means you'll need to scrape off all of the leftover mortar. In our case, we are putting down engineered wood flooring with a standard Pergo Gold underlayment. Since we used underlayment, the floor didn't need to be as perfectly flat as if we didn't use underlayment, but it still needed to be pretty flat so you don't feel bumps under the new flooring. All right, got to get this stuff off, off the floors and I'll use these tools. After I removed all the tile, I started out chiseling up the mortar with a drywall tool and hammer. This worked, but the drywall tool was flimsy and inefficient. Eventually, I got a real chisel from the hardware store and it worked much better. I went out and got myself a chisel to break up this whatever the heck is called on this concrete board. I will tell you, this thing is like worth its weight in gold. If you need to remove a lot of tile, you might want to get a floor scraper or some sort of power tool to get the job done. But I was operating on a tight budget and I didn't really want to invest in more expensive tools. So for me, I found that using a chisel and a hammer worked just fine to remove the mortar under the tile. Removing the mortar without breaking the cement board was tedious but necessary to get the floor flat enough to put down new engineered wood flooring without feeling bumps through the floor. Oh, I made a mess. I went online and looked up the average cost to remove tile and the rate varies based on location. It looks like the average rate is about $4 per square foot to remove tile if you decide to hire a professional to do the job. So if you decide to take action and remove the tile on your own, you could potentially save yourself a lot of money depending on how many square feet you need to remove. In my case, I already had most of the tools I needed for removing tile in my kitchen, but I did have to go out and buy a chisel. If you already own most of these tools and you have some spare time on your hands, you might want to get out the hammer and do this job on your own. I'd estimate I saved about $400 or so learning how to remove tile and doing it all on my own. It was a lot of work, but sometimes it just feels good to do a DIY project and see the progress and results along the way. If you have any questions or comments about how to remove tile, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If this video about how to remove tile has been helpful to you, please click on the like button. And if you'd like to see more of this kitchen renovation, check out the links in the description box. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.